Hello? Hey. Uh, Alright, so uh, you're Aris, right? I do have yes, the right I person am. online. Okay, maybe you don't know me much. Uh, uh, do, do you have any questions before we start? Uh, sure. Tell me a little bit about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're doing this is the other way around now. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, my name is Khairil Izudin Ismail. Uh, I currently work with E Central Central Methods uh, Sharm Bahad E Central dot com. We do ebooks for the Southeast Asia region, but I also kind of like in a way, um, we don't really have a formal position. We have this group on Facebook running. It's called Jom Web, and mostly uh, it comprises of uh, programmers, developers, system admins, and IT people. Oh. So uh, recently, I just uh, I thought about compiling a list of uh, interesting local, not necessarily local, but Malaysian uh, um, software entrepreneurs. So oh. that's where I come by your name. Uh, where you, uh, and quick schools. Okay. So uh, my aim right now is to compile as many as I can, as as much as I can, uh, compile a list and uh, uh, go get them one by one and ask, nice. to ask them to tell me their story. Yeah, wow. By the end of this, you'll know like, all these people, man. That's pretty cool. Um, I have like five lined up so far. I, yeah. Actually, the list is a lot longer than that. Than that, but I have five lined up so far, and uh, I hope I do get. I do have the momentum and stamina to keep this running. Yeah, man. Because this is not related to your job, right? No, not at all. It's your other thing, right? Yeah. Right, but it may okay. be. I do plan. Uh, I I hope you're okay with this. I do plan in a way. Um, when I get all this interview, at least enough interviews for a book, I may like publish it, uh, uh, get it out as an ebook and have it on our website as well on eCentral. Wow, cool. Okay. Uh, all right, man. Okay, <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Why don't we get started with sure. uh, no your yeah. your background and uh, a little bit about your education and your previous work before QuickSchools.com? dot com. Okay. Um. I, yeah, so I went to school in upstate New York, in Cornell University. Um, this was way back in, graduated in 99, so, you know, that was quite a while back. Uh -huh. After graduating in 99, I went to work in Silicon Valley for uh -huh. three years. So from 99 to 2002, I had three different jobs. I worked for Altera, my first job, I don't know if you know Altera. Yeah, it's a familiar familiar name. <laughs> yeah, because Altera actually has a big Penang office as well. That's oh, right. One. That explains. I think I do have uh, one or two friends who works in Altera. Right? It's more into engineering, right? It's a chip company. Yeah, that explains. Yeah. That. So my background is I'm an electrical engineer. Yeah, I was about to ask you that when yeah. <laughs> at school. Yeah, so I'm not a computer science major or I mean, you know, by by degree, I'm an electrical engineer. So I was working in the chip industry for about a year. My second job was with a startup in Silicon Valley, which, which when I joined was like right at the peak of its excitement, the IPO, and then suddenly it crashed. <laughs> then it, the was about died, like, it. it was about, you, you were about to get your own uh, shares, lots and stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, they said that we were going to go public in like six months, and then instead we closed shop in one year. Oh. Wow. So after closing, but so that was a nice experience for me as a developer. I've been doing it on my own, but that was my first developer official job, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So you went from um, electrical engineering into uh, hardcore programming on your second job. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so okay, that was my second job, and then my uh -huh. third job was with another was like with uh, another company also here. Half here, half Canada, so that was kind of nice. So I had a chance to like check out like two different places, I guess, as uh -huh. part of my work. Um, and then after my third job in 2002, my friend from Malaysia, Azreen, uh -huh. he went to college in the UK. So we only know each other from high school and then we don't, I mean, we're not Wait, in the same um, place anymore. Where did you go for high school? Oh, okay, okay. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I still I went to VI. VI, all right. 
But for a few months... Actually, one, months, of, one of my colleagues uh, is from VI. Your colleague, what year? Depends lah, kan? Uh, he's maybe like two, three junior from me. I'm 79. He, okay. He's so maybe he's very much younger lah, kan? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm 76. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I went to VI, and then for a few months, I went to KTJ, College Nampu Jaffa. Okay, call it Pila. And my friend Azrin also was in College Nampu Jaffa, but he was there for longer. So both of us were Saim Darby scholars, but he was there from from Form 4 all the way to... Eh, so, ah, yeah. Form 4 all the way to 6th Form. Okay. So I met him there lah. Hmm? So you so, met Azrin um, in KTJ? Yeah, KTJ. All right. So, years later, 2002, he emails me and he says, Hey, man, look, there's this business plan writing competition. Okay. Uh, uh, which is organized by a few few few, few people. Like, uh, it's organized by MIM, Management Institute of Malaysia. It's organized by, co-organized by McKinsey. It's uh-huh. co-organized by some government thing, like entrepreneurial thing. Uh-huh. It's co-organized with, which company was it? Not Proton, not Petronas. Oh, I can't remember now. But you know, it was this like, oh, at that time it was a big thing. Like, it was Venture 2002. And they had okay. it every year until 2002. I think that was the last year. Yeah, I think so, those those are the times when MSC is starting up and there's uh, MSC also. and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, We're active. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, and then he's like, hey man, we should join. I was like, okay, let's join. So, Azrin and I and another person from here, California, named Macy, uh-huh. he decided to do it for, for just the fun, for fun, for fun. Yeah. Right. So, submitted a business plan writing competition. We we said we were, we want to win. We want to win, you know. All right. So, so we submitted. And then we got top 10. So, we got top 10. Uh-huh. And they said that we will decide the winner from the top 10. But if you want to be in consideration for the prize uh-huh. you have to give a presentation in Malaysia lah, mm-hmm. right? because at this point we are remote Azri in Malaysia right. I in Canada and Macy in Silicon Valley so three different places man <laughs> yeah yeah so then we so they said if you want to have a shot at it you must come to the presentation so at that point me and Macy were getting a bit excited about the actual business because we had been working for on the business plan for like six months and then we said Hey, Jova, I mean, let's, let's start the business. So we quit our jobs and we flew back to Malaysia to try to win the first place. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So then we won. So we won the first place. Wait, okay, so you won. Okay, my, my question won. about the business, uh, business plan that you did. Does that, did, did that ha- have anything to do uh, with quick schools? No. No, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that one had to do with Something supply else. chain uh-huh. software. Oh, okay. So after we won, we decided to start the business. So we started the business and then we built a product for a supply chain. Mm-hmm. And then we tried to get a customer. We got our first customer, which is a Cement Industries Malaysia. So it's a cement company. Uh-huh. So we did logistics software for the cement company. Uh-huh. And they were a big client. So uh-huh. number one client was a really good uh, good client. Uh-huh. And from there, we grew. Like, we grew. And uh, we got, uh, we did a lot of logistics supply chain companies as customers like Malaysia Airports, uh, Northport, mm. uh, some oil and gas subs, uh, vendors. Right. Uh, so we did that kind of enterprise software. So I guess with all, uh, clients like that, you were doing really well with, with that first business. Yeah, we were definitely doing okay. Definitely doing okay. Profitable from year two. Mm. And. Yeah lah, ah, we're okay. But we were not satisfied. Uh, <laughs> because in, we in, what <laughs> in what way? In what way? In what way? We were not satisfied because the even though it was a profitable company, mm-hmm. there, 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 we couldn't see a path for uh, explosive growth. Okay. See, we, to do the enterprise space, if you want to sell to more and more, you have to keep growing your team because every customer, you need to have a team of four or five people to service that customer. So, right. for example, suppose you want to get four clients a year, we'll have to have a 20-people team. Right. And at that time, because I didn't know people like you, I didn't know how to hire and we couldn't find anyone. to. to All right. To, it was hard to build a team now. Oh, okay. Hard to build a big team. It was easy to build a small team of like five people 
But to build a big team, memang I was having a lot of trouble. So we couldn't grow the business because it was just too limited in terms of our skill to grow uh, rapidly. We can grow a little bit, but not like crazy again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So then we decided like, you know, wanted to try something new. So that business actually is still in existence today. It runs uh-huh. uh, and we are still the shareholders. Okay. In fact, that business is the parent company of Quick Schools. Oh, okay. What's the name again? Maestro Planning Solutions Sendirian Berhad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the parent company of Quick Schools. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. And you can, I think the website is still up, man. MaestroSolutions.com. Wait, let me check. <laughs> I think I did went through that website before um, uh, trying to get in touch with you, though. Oh. Yeah, I did a bit of uh, research it's myself. MaestroSolutions.com. <laughs> yes, it's still up. Okay, so that's the parent company of Quick Schools. So at that time, we also had, by accident, did one project for College of Pujat Far, which is uh-huh. mine. Right. So we built a school management system for them. Even though it wasn't our core business, we did it more for like because they are our alma mater lah. Right. <laughs> and then at that point we were like, hey, what business can we take to outside Malaysia? Because you know, the world like America, for example, has got three hundred million people. You right. Malaysia has thirty plus million. So it's like ten times the market size and okay. they speak the same language, can uh huh. Like, what can we do for the US market? What can we do? We wanted to try to do an online web-based uh, software as a service. Model. It's not that we wanted to do, it's not that we wanted to do school management system. We wanted to do software as a service for the US market. Anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anything, so viable. Huh? Hello? Anything viable. Anything viable. So we look like, we look, we try, we brainstorm. What can we do? What can we do? And I find it like, hey, we have this school management system. Let's go to the US. Let's meet a couple of schools and show them our product and see whether they are interested or not. Mm-hmm. So, I was going to the US for my friend for personal reasons. And then Azrin, who is the salesperson, uh, contacted some US schools, arranged a demo uh-huh. with some US schools on mm-hmm. my trip to the US. And also UK, actually. So, I was going to both countries, so he organized a presentation. And damn it, man, they were interested. <laughs> they were? Yeah. So, you know, this random school we call and they were interested. So we're like, hey, maybe there's a business here. So we started focusing on Quick Schools. We started building the Quick Schools product. This was back in 2009. And you know, when we launched the product in 2009, the first version, like, okay, it's super uh-huh. beta. Forget about like what it is today. It's totally different. It's like super beta. Uh-huh. It was launched in 2009. And then we thought that the customers were going to come by the bus loads. Uh-huh. <laughs> But nobody came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know, you know, a week. Kan? A week. Yeah. So we had like two or three people first coming in. So then we did some SEO and then we got a lot of visitors. But the product was too... So first step, SEO. Okay, SEO uh-huh. was successful. So if you search for school management system, we're page one. And we've uh-huh. been page one since 2009. Ah. You search for school management software, we're page one. You search for school administration, all the keywords, lah, we're uh-huh. all page number one. So that was actually the first successful thing that we did was SEO. We got into page one. Okay, and let, we let, started, me, let me, let me oh. um, stop you a little while. Um, why don't uh, I'm going to get back into all this SEO stuff because it's interesting marketing things. But okay, let's continue. <laughs> I see, I see. Okay, so anyway, so we, uh, we, we started getting traffic. Mm-hmm. Then we decided that, you know what, if our business is going to be in the US and also in Malaysia, we had a hard time hiring engineers. Mm-hmm. Let's see what we can do to hire engineers from here. So we actually hired engineers from here to fly them to Malaysia to work for us. Oh, really? That's how desperate we were for, for like high skill engineers. <laughs> here, when, so, you, when you said here, you, 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 uh, you're referring to the US. Yeah, we put an ad in the US, in California, in San Francisco area, and then we interview them remotely, and then we fly them to Malaysia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we got one, at least one or two guys. Well, we got two guys. One guy actually came, so he, so that was nice. So we got one guy, and then we had a very nice experience with this guy. Uh-huh. So after that, we decided to, you know what, if our market is in the US, and also right now we're having trouble hiring in Malaysia, why don't we try to go to the US and build a business there? Like actually hire their... You know, a Malaysian company, but in the US. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So we moved in January 2010. January 2010, we, we all right. Left, we flew here, and we started to build a business here. So now we have about 20 people, but we're 
some, uh, some part time, some full time, but total about 20 people working here. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry, we got funding from Malaysia as well. You've and got, uh, come again, funding. Funding from Malaysia. All like right. A visa from Malaysia. Uh-huh. Nama dia, uh, DTA Capital. DTA Capital. Yeah. All right. So they're very important lah because without them, definitely we wouldn't be able to afford the US prices, kan? Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, so we've been here for like last three years, and Alhamdulillah, this year has been very good, and we're growing lah. Mm. Okay, uh, that was a, a pretty nice uh, background story on how it all oh, started. Oh, but there were a lot of hard times as well. Just make sure I put that. Uh, okay, in there. <laughs> I, I, I'm going. I want to get into that as well. The first thing. Okay, so uh. Uh, I have kind of like a few a list of things that I want to cover. So I think we cover much, pretty much about uh, my f- uh, initial questions. But let's get into uh, development. Um, can can you roughly um, you can get you can go as technical as you can on this because most of this will be listening or will be reading this later are very technical people. So I myself is a very technical people. So. Um, uh, as much as you can share, as long as it's not like a company secret and whatnot and stuff, um, I'd like to know your the platform, your your server stack, and your methods uh, when it comes sure, to sure. development. Sure, sure. So, uh, what is Quick Schools uh, built off? <laughs> okay, first of all, the stack is currently today, which is very different from last year because you know you have to keep updating. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are running in Java on the back end, running on a JBoss server. Uh, we are running a Postgres SQL database. Uh, we are running Amazon Dynamo. Wait, sorry, wait, hang on. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Yeah, we're running, uh, two, two databases. SQL is Postgres and Nose SQL is Amazon Dynamo DB. All right. Okay. okay. Um, so depending on what data you want to store, it either goes to SQL or DynamoDB. But uh, we also are running the, the, one of the, my favorite pieces of technology is Firebase. I don't know if you've heard of Firebase. Firebase, uh, a database? And we, uh, well, yeah, sort of, but it's actually, it's a, it's a real time client synchronized database. I don't know how else to check it out. But anyway, that's something that we use for our real-time messaging stuff. Like So every, so it's very hard to build real-time into a website, but huh? with Firebase, it's very easy. So that's what Oh, really? Do. Okay. That's yeah. interesting to know. I'll, I'll look into oh, that. Oh, it's super interesting because it's new and my and the friend, my friend who founded the company actually like to ask me, hey, do you think this is interesting? And I was like, yes, <laughs> I want it. <laughs> so this is something like Node.js? Uh, no, it's not Node.js. It is, first something of all, like... it's a, it's a service. Uh-huh. It's not a platform or a framework. It's a service. They uh-huh. provide a service. That means, you know, like it's a, they manage a service. And if you put a few lines of JavaScript in your client side JavaScript, uh-huh. then you can get real time push yeah. to your website, web client easily. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. I'll look at Which I find so- very difficult to do without them. All right. This of course, is- it's possible, but it's hard. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. From what I understand, it's like uh, Node.js but as a service. So kind of like a platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, something like that. I guess you could say that. But to me, not Node.js is more than just a, a real-time thing. Node.js is like, a, it's like a running JavaScript on the server, right? Uh, yeah. So, But this is more to do with the real-time database synchronization. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, when you said uh, Firebase, uh, I was thinking way back into interbase time. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> this is way forward into 2012. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So those are your stack, and no, how no, about no, no, no HTML5, JavaScript lah. Mm. Uh huh. But you said previously you you were using something else. Is that uh? Yeah, we what? are using the same product we built from 2003. So the original product was based on Flash because in 2003 there was no HTML5 and there was no good. JavaScript. Mm-hmm. So we were Flash, at, you know, Flash until last year, where we finally migrated to HTML5, which oh. was a very difficult migration, but we did last year. Mm. So initially, when you launched in uh, 2009, the uh, school management system and also the one that you uh, deployed in KTJ is based. The UI is based in based on Flash. Yes. Wow, that's interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, and people be like, why are you using Flash? It's like, shut up lah, we've been around since 2000, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> right, then until, until recently with the iPad, and then when you, you yeah. want to go mobile and stuff. Yeah. That's correct. Okay, that's interesting, interesting to know. Now, how about, um, do you uh, apply any development method, like waterfall or agile? <laughs> if I tell you waterfall, I think I better put down yeah, the phone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if, uh, what else is there besides Agile. Oh, I don't know, maybe uh, Kanban or whatever you use. Do you have any of those? Okay, we don't have a formal methodology. We use a combination of methodologies, right? So, for example, uh, original my original methodology from before is extreme programming. Uh-huh. Extreme our, programming, oh, yeah. You know, okay. yeah. Pairing programming and stuff like that. Pair programming, test-first development. That was our original methodology. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, when we did kick schools, we didn't do everything, but we definitely kept the agile parts of it. You uh-huh. know, so for example, our deployment cycles are very short. It's like daily deployment cycles, maybe a week deployment cycles. Uh, we have definitely slacked off on the test first methodology. Uh-huh. Our platform has been developed over 10 years and that has been very stable. So we no longer do test first. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, um so I would say we are like half agile, but we don't do all the formal Scrum you know the team and okay, okay. Back, in the day, back in the day when we had a large engineering team in Malaysia, uh-huh. Uh-huh. we definitely had the user stories. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, you had uh, the the upper yeah, the upper the, the, the sticky notes on the wall and all that stuff. Uh-huh. We moved to the US, we became a smaller team. Uh-huh. So Abandon all that, and we, you know, we have a more informal process because we are a smaller team. Uh, yeah. uh, talking about your team right now, all your team is is working uh, on. Oh yeah, you said you did mention to me that you have some part time. Yeah. Uh, so they uh, work all in the office or some remotely? Uh, mostly remotely, some in the office. So how do you manage that? Now we're talking about uh, collaboration okay. and and, and um, team management. Fun. Yeah, that's a fun one. That's a fun one. I like that. <laughs> right. So, so let's so for, Yeah, exactly. Because that's kind of like hot topic now. Remote working, how does it work? How do, how do people do it? So uh, we are actually very uh, interested in remote working. Mm-hmm. Our hiring, it starts from our hiring all the way to the working style. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the hiring process starts with the fact that we don't care about where you are from, who you are, what your nationality is. Mm-hmm. When we put an ad out in the Craigslist for a position, mm-hmm. anybody can apply and we don't even look at the resume. Okay. So step number one, we don't look at the resume. We just we give them a... The first thing is already a test, like a real engineer programming test. Kind of like... So, so they do a short 20-minute engineering test to apply for the job. Oh, right. All is just compare the answers and without even looking at the resume, we give everyone who passes the job. So let's say 10 people are good at the, did the first test very well. Mm-hmm. We offer all of them an uh, 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 hourly based position mm-hmm. and they actually have to, the interview is actually work. And that means oh, that right. after that, from that point, so 10 people have the same job they are, mm-hmm. and I give them the same first job. Let's, oh, so right. let's say the First job is to be- develop a widget. So all 10 people get the same job. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and based on that first job, I will decide who will actually become the, 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 the position, you know, who, who will take the position, who will be given the, the position. Lah. Right. So in, in way, other words, yeah, yeah, so it's completely job-based evaluation. Ah, all right. So it's kind of like uh, if you're qualified for the first round, you get kind of like a freelancing gig. Yes, correct. And that based on how you perform on that, uh, you yes. may be offered a permanent contract, a permanent uh, position. Yes. All right, correct. that's interesting. That's that's very nice. And then yeah, how and does that yeah. go into um, working remotely and having... So, so, so because we hire in Boston, so this is a bit strange. We are based in California, but we put right. our ad in Boston. The reason is we find that Boston has a very nice market for engineers. Oh, Therefore, really? it is very remote, yeah, because okay. Boston is not so tech like Silicon Valley, but it has a lot of universities, so a lot of people graduate from tech there. Okay, I'm not really well versed with uh, the geographic okay. side of the US. How far is California? I know California is the state on the uh, west side. West, yeah, and, and Boston is all the way on the east side. All the way on the east, around California and all those areas? No, no, I mean uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, no, no, New, around New York, New York. New York, yes. New York, Chicago is on which side? In the middle. Chicago is more in the middle slightly. All right. 
So, so, you, so most people think of like, okay, on the West Coast is LA and San Francisco. Right. On the East Coast is Boston, New York, Washington, D.C. And the middle is Chicago. So most of your recruiting is done uh, in Boston. In Boston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice market. So what do we do for, for remote working? Number one, mm-hmm. uh, we use uh, Cloud9 IDE. Cloud9 IDE. Have you heard of it? Not really. Okay, so it's a new IDE. It's completely cloud-based online on the browser. Oh, all right. Interesting. It's so, not a great. It's not like an amazing IDE, but it's a damn nice IDE for the freelancing phase. All right. Okay. And and as they work, I can see them working. Ah. It's a real-time IDE, collaborative IDE. Okay. Right. So as they're coding, I see the code. If I don't like them, then sorry lah. <laughs> then they got to go lah. All right. <laughs> yeah. So that's the number one tool we use is Cloud9 I, remote, uh, col- uh, remote Collaborative IDE. Uh-huh. The second thing we use is uh, they track their hours using a, you know, an hourly tracking thing. We pay uh-huh. them using PayPal every few hours so that they build the trust that we are a real company. We're not trying to like depot them by giving mm-hmm. them some fake job and never paying them. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh yeah, I guess the, those are the key elements lah. Is the cloud nine, the hourly tracking, and the paying remotely. Okay, say that they do get the job. You do offer them a permanent position. Mm. Mm. After that, do you um, if possible, do you want them to be in the office or um, they can be in Boston? Uh, right now, the people that we hired offered full time, they moved to Boston. Uh, to our office. A move to your office. Yeah. Uh, do you have any of but, them um yeah. working from Boston permanent positions? No, no permanent. We have all the remote positions are hourly based. All right. So I would yeah. assume that those who are remote are kind of like freelancers or part time basis. Yes, hourly basis. All right. Okay. Um. Most so uh, mostly when it comes to communication and project management, those are done in the Cloud9 IDE. Uh, well, no, I mean the Cloud9 is just for the coding, uh-huh. but the project management is done using uh, basically Google Docs. Google Docs. All right. Yeah. Any other tools that uh, you use that you like to share uh, with us? Uh, Asana. We use Asana, right? Huh? Uh, um, have you used Asana? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we use Asana, we use, so project management is Asana also lah, a little bit uh-huh. of that. Uh, let's see, I have all my tools. We use Assembler for the, for the, uh, ticketing system. Assembler, is that right? Yeah, basically right. it has a ticketing system based on, what, uh? I don't know, but it's a ticketing system lah where you can uh-huh. log problems, bugs, and all that. Okay, so uh, Assembler Ticketing System is for development, not for customers. No, not. We all use right. Zendesk for customer tickets. Oh, all right. Okay. We use HipChat for chat. With customers. No, 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 no. no. We use HipChat for internal chat with a remote team. Mm-hmm. We use Zopim for customer chat. Okay. It's a Singaporean company, actually. Right. Zopim. So you have uh, Zendesk and Zopim as well. Zendesk, yeah, it's not for the chat. Right. Zendesk have is chat. for the ticketing system, for right. customer ticketing. Zopim for chat, Asana for project management internal, uh, pipeline deals for our sales management tool. Pipeline deals, all right. Uh, we use uh, GitHub, for obviously, for the repo. Uh, you have private as well, I suppose. Yes, yes. It's actually all private. We actually don't have any public. Right. Yeah, yeah, we don't have okay. much. We're not very good at the open source. <laughs> okay. uh, and lastly, Amazon Web Services, as, yeah. as you saw from my status update for our... Right. Uh, I, I did uh, see that. You just uh, completed uh, a migration to to uh, AWS. Right. Okay. So that's all the tools we use. Lah. Okay. Kiss metrics. Uh, well, no, no ah, you only want metrics, development sure. tools. But yeah. Ah, we'll get into marketing as well later. Um, okay, now when it comes all when it comes to your um employees and your staff, um uh how 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 many are uh developers, how many are engineers, how many are non engineers? Okay. Developers we only have three. Uh okay. And the rest? And the rest, so we have three developers. Uh-huh. We have uh, well, I guess a management, a few couple of management sort of level people. Uh-huh. We have one head of customer support. Uh-huh. 
We have seven chat agents. Seven chat agents, all right. We have three video editors. Video edit three video editors. Yeah, three video. I mean, they're part time though; they're not full, right? Three video editors, three copywriters. Uh huh. Copywriters is it? Uh, okay. Uh, marketing is two right now. Uh huh. And two salespeople. All right. So I guess your three developers has to be really really hardcore then. Well, the reality is we spent three years doing nothing. All those people didn't exist for three years. For three years, the only people that existed were the management and the developers. So oh, we were okay. quiet mode for many years trying to build the product quietly, slowly. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And then once three years passed, the product was very stable. Now we build the rest of the team. Ah, okay. Now, how about this? Um, uh, when it comes to your team members, do you believe in like building a solid team and, and do you offer any like loyalty program or equity share or stuff like that? Uh, you know, we definitely be, okay. Our part timers uh huh. don't uh pure uh, hourly base, uh-huh. so there's no equity program for that. Right. For our full timers, yes, we have equity program, but unfortunately, uh, it, it we are late. Like we have a lawyer and we're gonna work through it, so it's not done yet, but it's in the okay. process. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. But we don't have anything too fancy, lah. Okay. We don't have like fancy office. We don't have like trips to Lake Tahoe or Thailand oh, or anything all right. like that. <laughs> Not like all the other companies here in the valley, lah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, like I, as long as uh, it's uh, profitable, everybody is happy. I suppose things are good then. Not profitable yet. My oh, throw is big schools is not profitable until end of this year. And also, um, in the projection, you will be end of this year. Projection is end of this year to be profitable, right? We are not profitable yet, just to be very. Clear, yeah. Okay, I was about to get into that. Um, I think you did mention this a little bit, but um, why don't you roughly cover about, if you don't mind though, um, about the financial backings of uh, Quick Schools? Um, financial backing of Quick Schools. Uh, we are we have three sources of funding. Uh huh. One is Maestro, our parent company. Mm hmm. Take all the profits from Maestro and put it into Quick Schools. Okay. Okay, that's number one source of funding. Uh huh. The two source of funding is DTA Capital, is a venture capital company which is a math cap outsourcy. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. So they, so we raised uh four point five million from them. All right. Okay. Ringgit lah, not dollars oh. lah. <laughs> <laughs> we raised it in two thousand and nine. 2009. So um, that's two. That, wait, that's uh, Maestro. Yeah. And and, and uh, then, yeah, and then the DTA Capital. And then we also received a grant from MDC for the. Uh, Alamak, what what's it called? Uh? MD M- 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 Grant Scheme, right? MGS, MGS. Oh, oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. So we got a grant from MGS a few years ago to build our scheduling technology. Ah. Uh, but uh, how much did you? But that's a very specific for only one part of the thing of this okay. of the company, like the scheduling technology. Yeah. Scheduling technology. Yeah. Uh, to be used in quick schools. Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. Mm. And currently, uh, uh, this company it has been running since two thousand and nine. Uh, yeah. Yes, quick schools has been running since two thousand nine, right? Uh, and you mentioned yourself uh, at this moment it's not uh, profitable yet but is it uh, self-sustaining? What does that mean? Uh, I mean uh, what I'm trying to know is whether the sales and the revenue that you get right now can it cover your uh, monthly operations? Right so starting in December it will cover our monthly operations. Alright that's nice. Yeah, yeah yeah and it is a monthly subscription Product right, so once a customer is on, then they pay monthly lah. All right. Now, okay. Now let's get into this interesting marketing part of the business. Mm, okay. <laughs> so the general question would be, how do you market and sell? The for the last three years, we before 2013, we focused exclusively on inbound marketing. In other words, Google organic search, 100. Uh-huh. percent Yes. Um, uh, since when? 2009? Yeah. And after that? 
since 2013, we've because our product is now very well received by the market, and we had a nice year last year. We have started doing outbound marketing, that involves uh, direct sales. Uh-huh. So our salespeople contact schools directly and attempt to uh, you know sell. Mm-hmm. We do conferences all over the U.S. So okay. we go to education conferences. We make create a booth. We set up a booth and. Uh-huh. We pitch our product and we demo our product. Uh, we do uh, growth hacking. I'm sure that phrase is like uh, doesn't mean anything, but we do growth hacking, which means anything online to increase our sales, lah. Okay. Whether is whether it's through landing page, the usual online marketing, lah. Online marketing, lah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, landing pages, SEO, conversion rate improvements. Uh, Facebook, t- Twitter. Although our social media strategy is very not successful cu- currently, okay. <laughs> because we don't put too much effort on that yet. Yeah. So that's where Kiss Metrics and and whatnot comes in. Ah, uh, Kiss Metrics is for the online marketing, growth hacking stuff, right? Okay. Um, just to um uh summarize. Uh, previously you do mostly like online marketing when you said about inbound. Um, not uh, even online marketing. That one is pure inbound Google right. organic. Search. So, right, so we didn't do anything other than SEO, right? Um, but when you do SEO and then when your um, website is listed on the front on the first page of Google, and what happens after that? Do they contact you? Do you go out and do demo, or do you no, straight away sell? No, what happens is they come to our website. Uh-huh. They they search for the product. Let's say they're looking right. for an online school management system. They uh-huh. find our web page on the Google search, they click on it, uh-huh. they see our website, our uh-huh. website has a video, has got uh, information, uh-huh. they click try the demo, they demo, and then if they, they have a 30 day trial, sorry, they click try for free, uh-huh. and then they try for 30 days, and if they like it, they put their credit card, and then they subscribe. Oh, so you sell directly, you don't really uh, do um, set up appointment for a demo or something like that? We do, but it's not the main way we do sales. It's not the primary way. The primary way is they discover the product themselves, they try it themselves. We have a chat uh, support, so they might ask a couple of questions on our chat, mm. and then they decide like, to buy or not. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really interesting on how... It's cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, uh, I, I think more or less, you know, how things are here in Malaysia, if you were to sell that school system uh, here, right? Well, which we did... <laughs> Okay. We sold to a few schools in Malaysia, yeah, and each one takes about six months to close. <laughs> All right, and this one, they come, they like it, they, they try it, they like it, and they um, extend. Yeah. yeah. That is really, really, really interesting. I guess um, before 2013, um, how many percentage of your, if you kind of like have a rough estimate, how many percentage of your customers really do come from that way, rather than uh, doing a demo and being on site at a school? Before 2000 and? 13. 13, yeah. 95%, I guess. Wow. Wow, that, that is really interesting because you don't really have to spend a lot on marketing and sales and stuff. Not from before 2013, yeah. We were growing purely on that. Organically, yeah. yeah. Do you think things could have been a lot faster if you go out and sell them? Well, so if you ask me what we should have done differently, it's not the marketing, it's the engineering. I sh- we should have done it differently. Oh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because our engineering was too small, so it took too too many years to build the product. It took three years to build a solid product with basically at that time it was only like one or two people, not even three like now. Mm-hmm. So I was one of them. So Memang, I just do nothing but code for three years, <laughs> you know, like something like that, lah, you know. Uh-huh. And because of that, it took too long to build the product to a to the level we want. To, we wanted to reach the level now uh-huh. a year and a half ago. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I get it. Took it. Three years, and now only we're starting the marketing. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we should have started the marketing earlier. I think we started the marketing at the right time, which is now. I just uh-huh. wish we had gotten to now a year and a half ago. Uh, okay, I think I get it. Yeah. Okay, roughly, how about um, achievement? Uh, uh, what are some... Um, interesting thing, interesting things that you can know that you, you, you want to share about um, quick schools. Like, well, let's see. Uh, for us, you know, uh, our customers come from all over the world. 
So every oh, time we really? get... So um, I thought, okay, that, uh, maybe I should have asked this earlier. <laughs> You're based in the U.S., but your customers are from um, all, the, all over the world. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Majority let, let, from the um, U.S. 70% have... U.S. Okay. 70% U.S. customers. Uh-huh. Uh, the rest all over the world. And there's no problem with uh, different school systems and localization and stuff? Um, it depends on the school. Uh-huh. So if they like our product, it is no problem. If they don't like our product, it is no problem. They don't buy it. <laughs> you know. So, oh, so, okay. I think we it, are a sad it, product. They, we, they cannot ask us to do anything. They have to either like it and buy it, or don't like it and don't buy it. Okay, interesting. You know? So nah. there's no customization, no there's on-site. There's no customization, zero customization. Anyone asks, we say thank you for giving us your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, we have configuration. Of course, you can configure the product. Yeah, that can turn on, turn off, change a few things. But you can't ask us to do something that's not... You can ask us and we we listen to all the feedback. If all the schools say, oh, I wish you had this, then we build it. Ah. We, it may be released ah. in uh, the newer ah. versions. Yeah. Updates and stuff. So this, right. is consi- this philosophy is the 37 signals philosophy. Right. Yes, I'm, aware with, um, I'm familiar. So with. that's basically how we operate. Yeah. Uh, so... Ah, so back to the schools, right? So 70% U.S. schools. Mm-hmm. Sorry, so I'm just looking at the numbers. 76% U.S. schools. Ah, uh, okay. So every time we get a customer from an exotic country like Norway or Costa Rica, we celebrate lah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Because yeah, I would, uh, my assumption was that uh, a software like this uh, has to be like really specific to um, countries and, and the school systems of that country. But I suppose um, um, it works for your for your case as well. Um, it can be sold well, all uh, over. Twenty four percent of customers, lah. Obviously, like the world is bigger than America, but not everyone buys our product, right? So, right. Yeah. Do you know about um, the type of schools? Uh, mostly private, government. Ah, we f- do exclusively private schools. Only. Okay. Yes, we don't do government because we don't go and sell. We, a government school, you have to go to the. School to the district or the government body and uh-huh. you have to do a presentation and you have to give a proposal. We don't do any proposals. That That is an is interesting business model. <laughs> yeah. Really a fun way how to run a business. <laughs> I, my dream was I can be on, on vacation and suddenly I get a text message saying, oh, you have a new school that's buying a product without you doing anything. <laughs> so can you do that yet? Yeah, now that happens all the time. <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, how about um, challenges or um, uh, failures, if I may say? That yeah, yeah, a lot, of challenges, a lot of challenges, a lot, 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 lot of challenges. Um, I cannot tell you how many challenges. Uh, first of all, mm-hmm. we even though Quick Schools is only four years old, uh-huh. three and a half years old actually, uh-huh. our we have been working together as the same team for eleven years. Okay. And that's a long time, my friend. <laughs> right. So we have a lot of burn, so we have sometimes burnout now because we're just doing the, I've been looking at the same code base, even though we have upgraded everything, but it's a similar code base for 11 years. <laughs> oh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because remember, we're using the same product from our Maestro Planning Solutions. Uh-huh. So, um, can I say that parts of Quick Schools is derived from a, um, logistic software? Yeah. Yeah, it's totally the same base. Yeah, definitely. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's some burnout issue, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, uh, I told you we did it for three years. We were in quiet mode and we did all the work ourselves. That one nearly killed us. Like to develop a, like with just a, such a tiny team for three years can take a lot yeah. out of you. Is that, yeah. is, is there any specific reason why you did that? Uh, uh, financial wise, not enough funding, or yeah. It, it, well, we it, it, what happened was in 2009 when we first got our funding, uh-huh. immediately we grew our team from five people. This is in Malaysia. Uh-huh. We grew our team from five people to uh, 15. Okay. And we thought that by, by growing the team, we can get customers. We can build an awesome product within six months, and then we can get customers. Mm-hmm. But we that is not true. It takes a damn long time to build a SaaS business. 
Okay. A SaaS business, actually, this is very common across many SaaS businesses. Mm-hmm. It doesn't explode. It, it takes time to build. So when we look at our burn rate of having 15 full-time, full-timers in Malaysia versus the customers that we were getting, we were mm-hmm. going to run out of money in like one year, two years. Oh, okay. So then we said, you know what? We don't know what the product, what the market wants. So we think we know, and then we put the product, and then no one wants to buy. Like in 2009, like we only had like few customers from the US, right? Throughout the so whole year. Said, uh, yeah, yeah, we only had a few. We were, I think in 2009, we probably had like six customers. Okay. And we were like, oh, like this guy lah. I mean, <laughs> we're gonna. One year, you know. Uh-huh. So we said, let's 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 close the company like we close the team uh-huh. and go to the US that's when we move and let's just figure out what the market wants before we build the team again uh-huh. uh, so the strategy was intentional the strategy was let's figure out the market and then when we figure it out let's grow the team grow the sales grow everything and that's what we did can but you explain how you do that how, how do you go about understanding what the market wants ah uh, okay because you have to experiment a lot you have to continuously experiment with your product. You have to try like a certain way and then the customers all say like that's bullshit. You have to try another way and then they love it and then you're like, oh, they like that. Okay, then you have to... So while you're experimenting, you can't afford to have a high burn rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so that's how we do it. We experiment. Uh, when you said uh, this is about um, trying to figure out what the customer wants and, and uh, what product yeah. to develop and what to sell. Yeah. But at the same time, we're doing that with an existing product. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So in a way, uh, partially or maybe to some extent, you build a product first and um, let it out into the market? Yes. All right. And then see whether what they like, what they don't like. And then what they don't like, we have to fix. And trust me, lah, the first version is never what they want. Never. And the second version, also they don't want. And the third version, maybe that's what they want. <laughs> maybe. But yeah. you do need to have your first version in any way. Yeah, exactly. You need your first version and you need to see people use your product. Why you have something to base it on? Again? Otherwise, all works. Right. right. So that's why... So the theory is still correct. Uh-huh. But the problem is we didn't anticipate that it would be... It would take that long time and it would have burned us out a little bit at that time. Again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was the one like difficult part. Lah. Okay. If I had to do it again, I would have a slightly larger team. <laughs> <laughs> larger team in the three years that we did that. Second problem is thinking that in SaaS, it can explode overnight. So after three years of experience and talking to a lot of other companies that do SaaS, mm-hmm. successful ones as well as not successful ones, mm-hmm. the reality is SaaS is amazing after a few years, but the first few years, you just need to put the time. Okay, interesting. It interesting. does not, it cannot go profitable in year one. But once you have your base, you are solid because your base is so solid. Every month they pay, every month they pay. Right. They don't go away because they like your product. Right. And you just keep growing new customers every month. You don't have to take care so much. I mean, you do have to take care of your old customers, but you already get, you already have them. Right. You know? And, and your you focus have, would be on uh, bringing in new ones. Bringing in new one, improving the product, blah, blah, blah. It's so solid after you have built your initial base. But it takes years to build your base. Years. Uh, that's what we discovered. Lah. And it's not unique to us. It is across all enterprise SaaS. Like we are kind of enterprise, right? We sell to mm-hmm. companies, schools. To consumers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and any more challenges that you'd like to share? Uh, visa issues. We had a lot of visa issues trying to come to the US, but I guess you just say it that way. Like, I don't want to go too much detail because okay. it's kind of sensitive, but I don't know what, you know, I mean, it's, it was hard to get a, a proper visa to stay here and work. Okay. Mm, other than that? Mm, no, that would be the main challenges. Lah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really get into this uh, earlier, but I, th- I should have. Um, I don't really know whether you're single, married, kids. No, I am single. Okay. Yeah, that's why it's easier for me to come and let go and just come to US and start doing this thing. <laughs> yeah. And your team members and Azrin? Azrin is also not married at the present moment, yeah. And uh, I remember that there's three of you guys, and the other Macy, one. Macy, Macy yes. is also not married, right? Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's like the common thread. But our fourth guy, Azroy, who is employee number like two or something, 
he I'll... is married. He works remotely from on Canada. Okay. Yeah. Azroy? Azroy, yeah. Mm. Malaysian lah. Oh, Malaysian. But he, uh. he resides in Canada. Uh, because his wife is doing PhD there. Uh, Alright. I think uh, being remotely that uh, has to be... Uh, you can do stuff with your wife and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, 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 exactly. You can like have so you, your, your wife can do PhD and you can follow and work from anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. In fact, he was he, his wife moved university. He had no problem. He continued to work with us. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Now, how about this? Um, uh, this interview, or <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's gonna be in audio or in written. <laughs> but, audio. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, audio. Um, I I need to edit my own voice as well. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, in in my group, there there are there are a lot of um programmers, developers, even like uh maybe web web designers is, and people like that. Um, a lot of them have this dream of starting a a business like what you did and building a SaaS and offering it out there. Um, what advice do you have? For technical people, for like like us who want to go into um, software online business, I think it's a great uh, opportunity. I also think that uh, you have to be prepared for the amount of time it takes. So, for example, a lot of people think they can do a SaaS as a side business. Mm. No way. <laughs> If you want to do it as a side business, thinking that you can put a product on the web and then suddenly, you know, you can just put a few hours of every day trying to build a business. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's different for consumer. Like, okay, I'm not talking about consumer. I'm talking about enterprise. Like, okay? so consumer, I have no idea. I'm not very uh, knowledgeable. So I don't claim to do that. But yeah. if, if if I think the opportunity is amazing. This is like, it's so nice for us to be a Malaysian company in Silicon Valley competing with everyone here. Uh, and succeeding, right? Mm-hmm. Which is wonderful and amazing. But it took a long time. And we thought it was going to take faster. So that's the only thing my advice is, please do it. But please do know that it will take a while and don't think it's going to explode overnight for enterprise. Lah, okay? That's advice number one, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, any more advice than that? Um... Uh, What's more important, um, uh, marketing or developing a product? Uh, I guess my opinion is developing the product. All right. <laughs> uh, and that's why it takes a long time because you have to build a perfect product, but it takes mm-hmm. a long time to build a perfect product. When you build a perfect product, the product will market itself. That is true. Mm. Yeah, it's true. That's what 40, 37 signals say as well. Mm-hmm. And I agree that when you build a good product, they actually will buy themselves. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, actually, I wanted to get into this earlier just now. Uh, you did mention about SEO and how SEO has helped um, sell your products in a way. Um, did you do your own SEO or did you outsource? Or well, did you we, do it? Okay, we had a, a staff, an employee, uh-huh. who did the SEO for us. Uh-huh. Uh, so you can consider that as in-house, lah, kan? Yeah. Because we did it through it, through it. But that employee is very good at it, and now he does SEO for many clients. Uh, yes. So he has become sort of like SEO expert. <laughs> All right. So I guess if we were to do it again, we would outsource to him, lah. Mm. Okay, so you already have you, you have your own um, SEO guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I guess uh, that covers. Uh, everything that I want to ask you about quick schools and uh, unless you have anything else to share well I guess I don't have anything else to share I <laughs> guess you asked a lot of good questions and I've covered everything lah. Mm. okay then uh, thank you very much I, I have a question for you okay. so what company do you want to start do you have any SaaS uh, thoughts or you want to do another kind of business uh, okay, currently I'm tied up to um, 